Hello and welcome to Practically. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is John Stevenson. And today we're going to talk about uh, the Clojure CLI tools. So projects that are configured with depths.eden. Um, as the file suggests, it's uh, an Eden configuration. Uh, so there is uh, Liningen and Boot, and those are be remember closure back in the day. There used to be something called Cake as well, uh, but Liningen has been the main tool. Uh, Boot's been a really interesting tool if you wanted to uh, really customize exactly how your project uh, is managed and works. And Closure CLI tools came out. Ooh, I'm not quite sure now. I've been out for a couple of years, I think at least. And uh, it's been steadily growing in uh, adoption. So we're going to see what it can do. I'm wearing this because it's a bit chilly today. Okay, let's get to before we start. That's not the wrong. That's there we go. Web page. Uh, I've got some more updates for what I've been doing for the closureists together sponsorship. So thank you very much for everybody who voted me for that. And I will keep on going to that uh, to the middle of November uh, when the sponsorship ends for that round. Uh, but I'm going to keep on going, creating content uh, full time as, for as long as I can, um, unless somebody offers me a job. And uh, then, what else? Oh, yeah. So, um, uh, the only thing changing, I've added these alpha books and I've added some different ways to contact me as well. So there's a closure in Slack. You can also reach out to me on closure in Zulip, which is like uh, Slack, but uh, it's also, I, th I find it a little bit easier uh, because it's got these uh, uh, threads. So you've got topics and inside the topics, you've got threads. So it is actually easier just to dip into a particular uh, discussion rather than having to wade through a lot of the things you have to do with Slack. And uh, just to keep up with the cool kids, I've got a uh, uh, Discord uh, channel as well. Uh, and I might see if we can use this to uh, to do the discussions rather than the rather than the YouTube chat, which is a bit limited. So we could actually run the video in here as a call, uh, and, and then it would still be recorded to YouTube. Uh, so this is what the apropos closure people are doing. Uh, so uh, I might see if it works for practically as well. Uh, see if uh, see if it helps with the uh, interaction from the audience as well. But feel free to put any kind of comments in the YouTube chat for now, uh, and uh, I'll let you know when we try out Discord. Okay, uh, oops, wrong one. Uh, that's about it. And then, as usual, the um, sponsorship uh, ways you can help out, help motivate me, and keep me going. Okay, let's dive into the good stuff. Closure, what is it? It's awesome. There we go. Uh, so if you go to Closure, the website, closure.org, then the getting started section, uh, I think for a while now has shown the Closure uh, installer for the CLI tools. Uh, and so yeah, you got the Mac, Mac and Linux Homebrew. You got Linux Script. You've got Windows as well. Uh, there's also um, if you go into My Install Tools uh, for Closure, uh, Windows can be a bit tricky sometimes with the CLI, depending on which version of Windows you've got. Uh, but there are a few options there. So when using the Windows subsystem for Linux uh, seems to be uh, a, a the simplest or least painful approach. Uh, there's also a scoop as well. Um, so the maintainer of that, uh, of, of the scoop for closures done a really good job. You do need PowerShell five for that. Um, and then there is a, also a, the getting started does have like a windows version as well uh, that you can try out. Uh, but uh, on, on Unix systems, it works. Uh, beautifully. Uh, Windows, it should work, but you might have a few teething troubles. But there is a, a CLJ for Windows on the Slack community uh, to get some help as well. Okay, and 
the main topic uh, of today is to well, what do you do when you've actually downloaded this? How is it? How do you make it work if you're used to Lining and how do you make it work like Lining and? So we're going to cover some of the uh, common tools, common tasks. Uh, yep. And to do so, I've got this uh, practically closure depths Eden uh, configuration just to help you kind of kickstart working with uh, Clojure CLI tools. You don't need to go off and try and find all the extra tools you can use with uh, Clojure CLI. Uh, and so this is just a GitHub repo you can fork. Uh, and there's a kind of detailed readme for this, which we'll go through. And then there's the, the actual configuration, which is in this depths.eden file. Um, so let's just uh, step back just a brief second. If we go to uh, where we go, if we go to my there we go. Uh, if we go to closure tools, then uh, if we just do a very brief comparison with um, closure CLI tools and lining in. Uh, so closure CLI tools is using this depths.eden configuration file. Uh, both at a, uh, a project level and a user level, and uh, and then for to extend what uh, the CLI tools can do, then you basically use libraries that uh, the community's written, and you include them via aliases. Uh, with Lining and you've got this, you've got the classic project.clj file, which is just a closure file. It's just a well, it's a it's a closure def mac def project macro, uh, and then you've also got the user configuration of uh, profiles.clj, which I always kind of had problems with and ended up kind of removing everything from there. Uh, and then there's lining and specific uh, plugin mechanism to uh, to do extensions, which which is great, but then they they only work for lining and whereas. What you're doing with uh, CLJ uh, CLI tools is you're you're just basically using a library and, and telling uh, closure CLA uh, closure CLI, CLI tools how to run that because essentially part of uh, closure CLI tools is just a wrapper around running uh, closure on the on the Java c command line uh, and then boot was great a uh, really interesting kind of project to be able to write closure to configure stuff as well. Um, but um, I don't think it really took off. Most people kept their projects fairly simple. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think uh, eventually kind of lining and moved away from plugins or encouraged people to, to, to use aliases rather than plugins. Uh, and that's very much the, the case of what you do in Clojure CLI tools. You just add an alias. Uh, and you've got some extra functionality. You've got an extra task. So let's have a look at, uh, so this is practically closure.depseden. I'll credit to uh, Sean Caulfield, uh, his, dot, his dot .closure um, a repository, which uh, inspired this idea of uh, kind of building something uh, for uh, capturing all the tools, because uh, uh, again, it can be quite hard to uh, to figure out what all the tools are um, and where they are, and so this uh, this closure depths Eden file is just helps you. Uh, it's basically curating uh, a lot of the tools that are out there, uh, and if there are anything any tools missing, then please let me know, uh, and I'll, I'll get them added. Uh, so one important point is that all the aliases I've defined in here. Uh, uh, are going to work with Closure CLI tools uh, 10.1.10.1697, uh, which was released, I think, about a week and a half ago. And uh, so, yeah, so if you're just starting with Closure CLI tools, then you're going to get at least that version. I think it's slightly newer now. If we go to uh, get started, let me bump the version up again. Yeah, so you're on 716, so that's fine. So that's going to work. Uh, it's just that uh, there's a slight change from uh, 697 onwards in the way you uh, call uh, these aliases. But if you're running an older version, you'll just get warnings. Um, it should still work. Um, 
actually uh, um, a lot of the projects that have their configurations will still work but you might get warnings uh, that they're not using the newer style of uh, flags but we'll cover that in a moment if you want to know what version it is you can just do closure minus s describe and i'll print out a little version of uh, what version of closure you're running let's just check see if i'm running the right version yeah there you go so i'm running 1.10.169 I might upgrade, but not not live. <laughs> I'll be asking for trouble. Uh, and then install these depths. Then, uh, so the closure depths. I'm just running this. This is just directly running in my dot closure uh, directory. So we switch to uh, three. So this is the depths file, uh, and it's just in my home directory dot, cl dot closure and then depths so you can just clone the whole repository into dot closure and uh, that that gets you going I mean you, you you can you don't have to use this but it gives you a very quick uh, jump start into using everything uh, and there are we've mentioned several uh, configuration layers so there's the when you install CLI tools it basically has a configuration that that basically tells uh, when you type in closure it, it knows which version of closure to use so as we probably all know that closure is a is a library uh, and all projects whether it be using lining and or boot or closure CLI tools is just using closure as a library as a library dependency and so the install sets it to whatever was the current version of Clojure at the time you installed it, which it should be 1.10.1. 1. Uh, and then you've got the, the kind of the user level uh, configuration. So this works for all the projects that you've got. So whatever, wherever you're typing Clojure, this should work. Uh, so all the aliases, all the configuration in here is available. And then you've got project specific uh, and you can override or merge in uh, configuration with the uh, closure depths .eden. and so they so they all merge into the other so we start with the the basic install configuration we apply the closure depths .eden file and then the project uh, and then one thing I haven't got in here is that we can also override these things on the uh, command line as well uh, bam uh, and if you do use this, then if you want to update uh, practically Closure Depths to Eden, you can actually use an alias to do that, that I've got in here, which we'll cover briefly. Uh, so basically use the alias uh, project outdated and it will update those. So I think I'll show that because I think it's, uh, um, uh, there is some updates I'm going to do. So if I go into cd uh, dot, oops, slash dot closure, and if I run closure uh, minus M, so minus M is the closure main uh, uh, approach. And so this is like uh, running so kind of the main namespace and the main uh, function in that namespace. So it, it's the way that we've been running closure for, for ages. And then it's project. Uh, uh, updated and what I usually do is pipe this into a uh, file um, so let's see what date is it today 10-17 uh, pipe it into a file I'm using an org file because then it's just easier to kind of funge around the templates uh, so whenever you're running a closure uh, alias for the first time it may download uh, some or, or a lot of uh, jars from the internet that's quite normal um, I think those errors are okay um, so let's look at that's so you see it's got a nice table of uh, 
all the uh, libraries that I'm using for CLJ uh, and the current version and the latest version. Um, uh, yeah, Cognitech Rebel uses a private repository. That's why it's failed to uh, fetch. I haven't got that set up yet. Uh, but it's very easy to kind of see uh, which new ones are. So I, I basically use this output in the change log for this so you can see which versions I've gone from. Uh, ooh, I might update these two um, later on. Those are the two I use quite a lot. And oh, DJ Blue Portal has got some nice updates as well. We've got to, uh, a nice subversion update. Uh, so you can go in and choose which which um, values you want to change. And um, this all relates to how I've kind of defined the aliases. So the aliases are all using, pretty much all using libraries, uh, and those libraries have a version. So this is basically just checking that version and seeing if there's a new one available uh, on the internet. And this is checking both uh, the uh, uh, Maven style and also the Git. Uh, so these are Git's uh, shards, so Git versions. So some libraries are still quite new. And so you can, instead of using a published Maven jar, uh, from Maven Central or Clojures, you can use a Git repository. And uh, then that way you can kind of follow the latest commit or you can stick to a commit. Uh, and uh, it gives a lot more flexibility. You don't have to wait for somebody to go through a publishing step before you can actually use their library. And using Git, you can also use a, like a, a local root. Uh, so you can actually just use another project in another file space, uh, another part of the file space. Um, so there's a lot more options in how you can actually use other pieces of code. Yeah, I think the warning is just from this uh, logging system. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, I'll have a look at the actual project. So this is a, a an error I think is coming from the... Uh, and antique, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, but it's uh, it's not a it's not a show-stopping bug uh, by any means. Uh, let's see. Cool. So we can install closure depths uh, and update them, and then how do we go about using them? Well, there's an awful lot of uh, uh, aliases I've added here. That's why I've added a little um, uh, section by section. I've put them into their own categories, uh, but there's quite a lot of ones I've found. Uh, so just to help you kind of navigate through all, all this new stuff, then I've done the, this little common developer development tasks. I've just added this yesterday. And uh, basically shows you like, like common things uh, that you would probably do, like things you would do in, in Lining and in other tools. Uh, so if you want to create a project, then, um, oh, actually, that's wrong. <laughs> I should be project new. Oops. Uh, I wasn't paying attention when I did this. Uh, yes. Oops. Let me go and change that. Live, as it were. Oops. All right. So let's go to the readme. Let's make that a little bit bigger. We there we go. So we can create a project, uh, and this should be a project new. Uh, I was just using new, but then that that doesn't really give you uh, much context in what the alias is actually doing, uh, and so uh, I'm using the qualifiers. So I guess this is coming from when I've been using spec. And using keywords because all these aliases are keywords so i'm just basically using a an, an, uh, kind of a qualified keyword and this helps categorize and group them and also helps you remind you what the alias is kind of doing or the context in which it's uh trying to do something so i've got a whole bunch of ones for um project uh and this is using the uh, clj new project library from uh, sean confield which is really, really good. 
uh, and you can create closure projects, but you can also use lining and boot templates as well. Uh, and so you've got two options uh, for doing this. There's the newer option uh, and the, I guess what I'm going to call classic option, although it's not quite as classic as using A. So we can call closure uh, and we can specify the M flag uh, to call closure main uh, and then just do the free form usual kind of uh, um, arguments to new. Uh, so we do app, which is the template name and practically my app, which is the uh, the name of the project we want to create. Uh, and then um, there's a new style, which is using closure exec. Uh, and that's using, that's calling, a spe uh, speci specifying a particular function we're calling uh, in a namespace. Uh, and then we can pass uh, key value pairs. So we're passing in like an Eden shape piece of data. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't pushed the change yet. <laughs> That's why the readme is out of date. Um, let me let me push this uh, oops, stage. Uh, 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 oops. Oop. There you go. In uh, if you refresh the uh, page, now it should be uh, it should be correct. Uh, let's just check that. This is what you get for uh, typing things in uh, uh, in the evening before broadcast. There you go. They're fixed. The power of technology. Uh, so closure X uh, is yeah is as I say it's the closure exec approach to do things. So this is the newer approach. I think it's a much nicer approach because you're actually giving context to the arguments you're passing in. Uh, so we've, here we've got, uh, we, we're specifying uh, a template and the template name, the name of the project and the actual project name. So it's a lot clearer about what it does. So if you come back, if you put this in a script, uh, then it's, you can come back and you can understand what the script is doing very easily. Whereas with the, uh, with a more free form approach, then it's, it's what we're more used to, but um, you have to know what the arguments are. Is it relying on positional arguments as well? So if you get these the wrong way around, then it's not going to work. So if we actually have a look at this, uh, then uh, we can uh, see how we've actually defined this. We can kind of delve into the differences between these two a little bit more de in detail. So I'm going to switch over to, so you can go to the depths.eden file in here. Um, and if we, uh, and I'm going to go and just do this in the editor because it'll be easier to find. I'm going to do uh, project new. There we go. No, that one. No, oh, that one. There we go. So in this project new, uh, so this is the uh, an alias I've added, and it is basically calling the. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Huh? Oops, sorry. Depths. That's what I meant to do. Project new. There we go. There we go. So we're we're using this CRJ new tool, uh, which is essentially a, a library. It's a, it's a closure project that we're just using and uh, from the community. And there's some uh, different approaches we can use there. And I've basically got uh, project new here. And uh, we're defining uh, some extra dependencies, uh, which is the CLJ new library itself. And then, um, so that's kind of, it's essential regardless of how you use the, the alias. And then uh, we've got the kind of classic uh, closure main style. So we're just defining the, the main ops. And you can see this is kind of more of a, uh, yeah, this, we're here, we're just specifying the main namespace. And then by default, it's using kind of like dash main um, by convention, uh, the dash main function. 
but the kind of new style, the closure uh, minus X uh, flag, the closure exec, it, we've got these two new, uh, well, there's three new actually. Uh, there's uh, exec function. Here we're specifying the fully qualified uh, function name. So, the, the, so there's a create function inside the CLJ new namespace. Uh, and then we can also specify some uh, args as well. Uh, let's just see if there's a SD, there we go, as default. Uh, you can also do it a slightly different way. So you can specify uh, the default namespace, uh, and then you can specify a particular function. So we don't need to qualify the function name here because we take it from the uh, default namespace. So this is the default main namespace. So you can see if you compare the two, you've got uh, Vlad Repl, uh, Vlad Reveal uh, Repl is the arguments we're passing into main ops, uh, and then we just dissected this into its own kind of key value pairs for the closure X. So we can have both running. Uh, we can include both styles in the alias, which I'm doing for now. Um, and I think eventually the kind of the the X flag, the closure exec options, probably going to um, be the preferred one that people use. But at the moment, there's still kind of a duality of the closure main that we're used to and the closure X that's, kind of, that's slowly kind of filtering out. Uh, there we go. So it's very easy just to add a whole range of these aliases. And these are all just in, so the, the depths, this is the depth seeding file I'm using every day. So it's just a map uh, with keys. So we've got, I've added source in there just in case I wanted to use this on the, um, without a project configuration. I probably didn't need that. Uh, and again, the, the dot depths, the depths, uh, is including the all the main library all the libraries I want to include in the main application. So just in case uh, I need to specify a different version of closure, I can do that as well. Um, and then then the kind of main body of this configuration is all the aliases. So uh, this is uh, aliases, and then down the bottom, the only other extra thing is the the library repositories, the, the providers that provide the dependencies that I'm going to download. So it is very simple and easy to work with. Uh, so you can see the aliases I've got, oh, about 800 lines of aliases, but they're all kind of very, very much documented in both the, the depths file and the readme. Um, and just before we dive more into the aliases, then the Maven repos, there's a few interesting ones here. So we've got central and closed jars, which are the main ones you include. Uh, you can also grab some snapshots from Sonotype. So you want to do some testing of uh, things that haven't been released yet. Uh, if you're stuck behind kind of a, a, a firewall at work, then um, we use this uh, JS Center bin tray. And this has got a mirror of uh, closures as well. So if, if your company or your firewall blocks access to closures, you can use JS Center as well. So if that was the case, you'd, you would uh, uncomment this line and comment out closures, uh, and uh, it would just work very nicely for you. And then there's some some mirrors as well. Uh, I think especially in uh, the Asia region, it sometimes it's a bit slow, so you can kind of try and optimize the downloads uh, of your dependencies from uh, using by using different mirrors. And if you've got a cache, then you, you've got a local artifact repository, for for example. Then uh, yeah, this is how you would kind of set that up as well. Um, so. It's fairly easy to do. Again, this just it's just a bit of uh, Eden, a bit of closure code uh, in a nice, simple data structure. Uh, 
Is there any other common tasks? Let's just nip back to that common tasks. Where each I've lost the page. Where is it? There it is. There we go. Uh, boom. Uh, so we've got creating projects, uh, downloading dependencies. This is quite new. Uh, so previously I've been using just uh, Clojure and SPath. You can put in aliases there as well. So if you use SPath, it's just going to print out uh, a path of something. Hey, good morning. Uh, so if we go into the terminal, You do closure minus s path. Then, if there are any dependencies in the project you're in, then it's going to download those, and uh, and then it just prints out the the class path. Uh, so it's actually a useful way to to download dependencies and also see if there's any kind of errors on the command line. Uh, so this is what I have been using for if I'm if I need to download the dependencies. Uh, uh, so it's, I guess it's the equivalent of line depths um, if you used to do that. Uh, and But there's a new way to do this now. Uh, there's a new flag. Uh, so you can basically use the... Oops, that's the wrong button. There we go. So you can use the minus P flag. Uh, and this basically just uh, is like a, a prepare. It's like a dry run of doing things as well. So you can use whatever closure... Um, command you want but if you put minus p in there at the start then it's just going to do a dry run of that uh, and not actually do it but also download uh, the any dependencies that it would need to be able to do the task so this is the kind of the preferred way of doing uh, getting dependencies uh, we can run the project so you can still run the project uh, by specifying the, the main namespace but we do need to specify that we want to use closure main here. Uh, and so we're specifying, we're gonna run closure main and then we're giving it the option uh, of the main namespace. So that's why we've got two, uh, two M's there, which might look a bit confusing at first, but it's actually, uh, we're telling closure, we're using closure main rather than closure exec and we're specifying the main namespace. Uh, if you just if you miss out the the M, it will give you a warning. What's potentially nicer, I find, is that we can actually specify uh, like a project run in the depths file. So if I just do a let's go to here and create a project. Uh, so new closure minus M oh minus X. There we go. I can do a so you can use, uh, here's an example I'm using, I could use Luminous on there as well. It would create a lining and template, but then I just need to add manually add a depths uh, configuration file. If I just use new, project new, uh, it's actually, it will create a project with a library and uh, using the library template and using the um, uh, default name. So just create uh, a playground for me. Oh, I didn't want to put that there, did I? Oops. Uh, uh, let's move that to a better place. Uh, projects. Uh, uh, there we go. Let's put that there. Uh, oops. So it's created a playground project for me. And uh, if we go into that playground tree, and it's just a simple closure project. Um, uh, if I go here, so I can create projects. Uh, I can also specify, I specify a template. I can run a uh, an app project. That's uh, my application. 
Uh, and so this is going to override the defaults in the uh, exec function I've got. So we switch back to the uh, here and do project, uh, project new. That's close enough. Um, so in the exec args, these are the default arguments it's using. It's going to use a, a, a lib temp a template. Uh, and I've given it a default name as well. I can then override those on the command line. So here we're specifying an app. So we're going to use the app temp template instead. And then this is the uh, name of the project we're going to use instead. So it does allow a lot of flexibility in what you can do. You can set some defaults uh, and then there might be a, a kind of a, a template that you're always using inside a company, inside your company. So you can set that as the default. Uh, Hadoop uh, tree uh, my application. There we go. Um, so it's a project with the depth Eden uh, configuration in there. And if we go into my application, so we can run this with closure. If we did, if we just specify the main namespace, which is correct. Uh, uh, dot dot my app. Uh, then it'll give us a warning that we should be using the the minus m it's still working for now but eventually at some point that will stop working uh, so the proper way to do that is just include minus m and you don't get the warning anymore there we go But what we could do is uh, edit the depths file. And we could add our own alias in here. Uh, this is just uh, this is NeoVim with Conjure. Using uh, NeoVim, it's Conjure is a nice environment for, uh, for closure. Next, specify so project. Uh, uh, oh, alias. There we go. Uh, run. And then that's the key. So we will need a value. And so we can specify the uh, NS default, uh, which is going to be uh, practically, uh, whoops. Oh, yeah, there we go. Practically my application. Uh, and I can specify uh, exec. Uh, function and that's going to be dash main and I could put some uh, arguments optional arguments there as well if I wanted to um, let's see let's just write that and quit that uh, and then I should be able to just do a uh, closure minus x Project run, and it'll do the same. I think it just gives a nice, simpler kind of interface into using the uh, using the application by like calling the application on the command line, uh, and it also minimizes uh, the kind of the options you need to specify. Um, I was told that uh, yeah. The more flags you add, then you kind of have to escape them on Windows, especially certain versions of Windows kind of make it more tricky to put uh, to use command lines. Um, it's becoming Windows is becoming more command line friendly, but there's still older versions that are a bit uh, uh, fiddly around that. But also, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, and if you have like a consistent kind of set of commands, consistent set of tools, then it makes it easier just to use uh, an application uh, in that way. Um, so you can run the project. Uh, yes, I didn't even need to. And you can specify kind of a different namespace as well if you wanted to. Uh, so the things that you specify in the alias can be overwritten, over, uh, overridden, overridden, but on the command line. Um, and some other nice tools like finding libraries. 
um, so we can find uh, find a depth uh, of the libraries. So if you want to go in and uh, ooh, there we go. Uh, oh, we can actually even merge it into the. I haven't used this very much, but it goes off and checks uh, the uh, the world, uh, the internet for things that are like a fuzzy match for. Uh, whatever search term you did uh, and in this this case we're searching for composure i think that actually did did that add it um oh yeah it's added it there we go yeah so you can you can add it directly to uh, the depths file uh, by using merge or you can just do a search and just it'll just give you some options about which ones to actually uh you, you could actually include i think it's just um that um, it'll give you a kind of a list yeah it just gives you the the depths and you can just copy that into the the file as you were as well I think I preferred that one because I think otherwise it does squish up your depths file a, a little bit uh, but if we do oops, if we're gonna have a look you see oh no it didn't oh it didn't actually add it it just gave uh, an output of the uh, what it would look like if it did actually add it. So uh, you could just copy paste that into the depths file, or copy the specific one in. Oh, that's not formatted nicely. Uh, there we go. Okay, so it's showing you where it it needs to go, <laughs> essentially. Uh, I think there is one that merges it, but uh, I'll. Uh, it's a. I've only just started using it, so it's uh, not quite worked out yet. So you can find tools. Uh, if you want to check for a new dependency, we did that already with outdated. So you can do that for your particular project. Um, we did this for just for the dot closure uh, depths to Eden file. Um, so it's essentially working on both, and um, uh, yeah, and it's really handy. So outdated just gives you that nice list of new um, new versions that you could use, both from Maven and from Git. Uh, and we can run tests. Uh, I've got a test runner in here. Uh, if we go to the uh, depths file again. Uh, let's go and search for tests. Boop. There we go. Uh, so we've got quite a few. So there's quite a few options uh, for using a test runner. So this is like an external uh, test runner. Um, for, oh, actually, before we go into that, the env, what I set up is this env test. Uh, so this is setting up the environment because uh, when you're when you're defining a a, a project uh, uh, depths.eden clj, then you're going to include paths that form the class path. So if we jump to we just jump to that uh, project we created. So this is the project. This is my application project we created. So by default, we're usually including the source and optionally the resources directories. So all the code uh, and any other artifacts for the project are all going to live under those uh, directories. And if you've got any other ones, or if you've changed the directory structure, then you'd change the paths. Um, but we don't really include uh, test. We don't really we don't typically want to have our test code deployed which is so everything in the paths the main path thing would be included in the deployment and so if we need any extra things for aliases then we can just include extra paths and that's in this case for test then obviously our uh, our test files are in the test directory um, uh, underneath that and here we're also including the uh, the test check so if we want to do some generative testing we've got that library on hand there as well and again we, we don't really want to ship that as part of our main dependencies we just want to include that as a uh, 
as an additional thing when we're running uh, closure with this alias. And then, uh, and then we've got particular runners here. We've got the Cognitech runner, and this is an example of using uh, a Git uh, URL. So we use we're pulling this re this uh, this library essentially from uh, from the Git repository rather than a deployed uh, Maven artifact like we're doing with test check. This is just, and we're just specifying a, a the commit number, a very long commit number. <laughs> Oops, I don't want to do that. There we go. Uh, and this is just specifying the main ops and which directory is the test directory. So this is uh, like options for uh, running the Cognitech uh, test runner. Uh, and if we go back to three. So in the uh, in the practically depths in file. Oops, a bit bigger. Oops. Let's make that a bit bigger. Then we've got uh, several test runners. Uh, so I've got the Cognitech one, which is nice and simple and lightweight. Um, it kind of works. You don't really need to set up any configuration on there. It just works. It's pretty fast. Um, gives useful feedback in there. Uh, there's a similar one by Olicarl for Closure Script. Uh, test runner, so it's like uh, inspired by the original Cognitech one. So Cognitech is just doing closure, and then my my current kind of go-to uh, test framework is Coucher. Uh, not because it took me uh, like five minutes to work out how to spell it, how to say it, but uh, it is a really comprehensive uh, test runner. And uh, as you can see, because I've created quite a few aliases for this, so I've created just a general test runner because this is what I kind of recommend as your default test runner. So I can actually just go onto the command line in any project and I just do test runner, and it should it should run the tests if they're in the uh, test directory. Um, let's just try that on. Put my money where my mouth is. Uh, let's see. So we're in my application. There is a test, and there, uh, and there is a test file. We do closure minus uh, m test runner. Then see if it does run the tests. I haven't added any configuration. Oh yeah, it's downloading some. Downloading the internet for me. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, oh, it's having problems downloading test check for some reason. Oh, maybe there's a bug. Uh, let's go back to here. Uh -huh. Oops, wrong one. And you can chain uh, the commands together. So you can chain the aliases together. Um, so this is including the generative testing library. Uh, in env test, so env test is just setting the test path uh, as part of the class path. There's something wrong with this. It might be the version. Uh, um, but we'll come back to that in a moment and fix that. So capture. I mean, it has been running. There's there's one configuration file that's very quick to add that we can add that usually makes uh, all the projects work. Um, but there's Coucher, uh, and I've set it up for... Uh, so you can also run Coucher, Closure, and Closure Scripts. Uh, and there's also one for if you've got Cucumber, so if you've got 
uh, behavior driven development style tests uh, if you want to do j unit reporting uh, if you want uh, coverage reports as well we can do that as well so it's, it's quite a comprehensive thing uh, it's, it's relatively new but uh, it, it, I found it very reliable I've been using it on my other projects and then there's a couple of other ones like uh, midge if you're running if you're using midge rather than uh, closure test um, and the only other one that's worth mentioning is uh, EF test. Um, the interesting thing about this is it, it'll run your tests in parallel by default, which sometimes is a good thing and uh, sometimes is not. Um, it can speed up the running of tests, but if your tests don't like being run in parallel, then it's going to cause some issues. Um, I think they'll, they're looking to add uh, running tests in parallel to capture at some point as well. Um, so if I go into here, um, where are we? Boop, 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 boom. Come on. There we go. Uh, so you can just add a configuration to this. Where is it? Uh, there we go. Where is it? Um, Oh, I've not got it on here. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It is worth doing another video specifically on Couch, I think. Um, and, oh. Boom, boom. Bear with me a second. I'm just looking for a, a piece of config which I've forgotten. Uh, is it configuration? Bam, bam, bam. Next one. Yeah, so you can provide this test.eden file, which is quite uh, extensive, but you can just do uh, like an empty. Uh, uh, an empty hash map and it will just use the defaults which is look something like this so if I go into my projects uh, oops, that's not the right project and let's do nvim um, test.eden uh, oh that's not right oh there we go Quit. There we go. Um, I wonder if that'll fix it. If this doesn't fix it, then there's something. There might be something wrong with the version of uh, Couch I'm using. Oh yes, maybe there's something wrong with the version. That's something. Um, where is it? Uh, wrong one. There we go. One seven. It's an even number. I'm always suspicious of even numbers that have the bugs in them the most. Uh, still in. Yeah. Maybe there's a new bug in that one. I'm not quite sure why that's not working. But I can also run the. Uh, oops. I can also run the. Um, if we do the nvim steps, when I create the project using that template, it created um, two uh, aliases. So there's the test. So this is the project specific uh, depths to Eden file. And we've got test in there, it sets the test directory and runner, which calls the test runner. So if you use those both together, then I should be able to run the tests. Um, oops. Uh, so if we do closure minus m then test and then runner so this is using both of those aliases together uh, and 
merging them all into one kind of configuration file. And it's downloading Cognitech Labs and it's running the tests. Uh, so it's nice and simple. It gives a fairly useful output on there as well. Um, if I go to uh, projects, closure, uh, database access, banking on closure, web apps. Uh, I do capture of oh, closure. That's not it. Oh. Uh, uh, I think I should call Lowe's. So this was working. So this is using Couch and it was working in this project. So I was just curious. No, there's some, I think there's some bug in that version of Couch because it was working okay. Um, oh, actually, no, there's a script in here, isn't there? So Couch also recommends using a script. So if we look at the, uh, so we do bin Couch. I may have missed something off because I just did this on the fly. Um, I'm pretty sure this should work. There might be some options I need to specify, but. Do, do, do. There we go, it's working. Um, so we can see it's doing it's doing more work than the Cognitech one. It's doing the unit tests here, and uh, it's passing those, and it's showing me which of the tests it's running, uh, and the specific kind of uh, yeah, test cases. Uh, and it's also doing uh, generative uh, checks as well. So generative, uh, so checking my FDEF specifications on uh, using closure spec test check. Uh, so that's uh, adding more tests there to what it can do. Uh, so it's one of the reasons I started using Couch is that it can run uh, your uh, uh, like F, F def checks. So you can check the specifications, uh, your functional uh, function definition specifications very easily as well. Um, and then the script is just basically just doing your yeah, Couch. The script is just running uh, the alias that's set in the uh, project uh, space. So if we look at the depths Eden file, um, there we've got aliases for test and runner uh, and running Coucher uh, there as well. Yeah, could you? Ooh. It's nearly ended. Oh, it's nearly uh, an hour. What else have we got? Where do we get to? There we go. Uh, packaging and deploying and uh, the application. So there's uh, if we want to package up a just a library, just create a jar. Then there's like the project jars. Uh, so this is using Depstar again. Another uh, excellent production from Sean Caulfield. Uh, and that's uh, that's an alias, but there is a if you want to deploy the jar, uh, you want to install it locally in in Maven in your Maven cache, which so in the uh, .m2 repository directory, uh, there is a built-in uh, command in the Closure CLI tools, uh, which will do Closure minus x uh, depths. So minus x depths is where they're going to add the kind of built-in. Uh, functions that uh, that come with CLI. So we don't need any extra aliases for this. And we just do a Maven install uh, and it will install the, the library of the uh, current project into that Maven repository, the local Maven repository. Um, and then I do have one for closures. Um, Yeah, so in the project section, so there's packaging. So we got jar, uberjar, 
I've also included Uber Depths, but that's not used as much, I don't think. Uh, so Uber Jar and Jar are both using the Depth Star one, which seems to be more popular. Uh, and we've covered that. Uh, and then, yeah, there's a deploy to closures and deploy closure has signed. Um, so the signed one expects you to have uh, closures and closure password environment variable set. Um, or you can just call the closures one and call this on the command line. So basically uh, do an env and add these uh, username and passwords on the command line. Uh, it's probably not quite as uh, secure. Um, so those are all the kind of main tasks that we can cover. Uh, and then I'm just going to very quickly blast through the rest of them. Uh, so we've got Java sources. So I'm using these mainly for when I'm developing in uh, CIDR. It helps me navigate through the Java um, docs and sources, especially if I'm doing any uh, Java interop. It's quite useful. Uh, databases, if I want to just have an embedded database uh, up and running, I just start that in the REPL. So this is just including the, uh, the driver for that. Uh, data inspectors, that's, that deserves a, a kind of a section on its own. Uh, I have uh, I do recommend either Portal or uh, Reveal. Uh, they're both are excellent tools, both open source and uh, pretty easy to use. Uh, and then there is the kind of uh, Cognitech Rebel one, which was uh, the original one. I think this is more useful if you are actually developing with uh, Datomic um, and uh, otherwise then I would just use uh, either Portal or, or Reveal whichever one you prefer. Uh, so I've got some middleware in there so if I need to connect stuff together. So one of the challenges is to try and uh, connect, uh, get things to connect, get libraries to connect that um, haven't been designed to be connected, so sometimes you can use some middleware to do that. Um, if I just want to run a uh, project uh, in the terminal, if I want to run a REPL in a terminal, I can use like kind of the nREPL middleware to add that, so I can just connect that with my like, with CIDR or probably with SEM. SEM should work for uh, Visual Studio Code and Carver, I think. Um, and because REPL uh, is basically a REPL and a visualization thing, then we, also, we need to add kind of uh, nREPL uh, to that. So there's a kind of example of adding uh, Cognitech nREPL with that to make that all work. And it's a bit fiddly, so I'm gonna skip the details of that, but um, it does work. You can get REPL and CIDR working together, should you wish. Um, Covered the unit tests already. Uh, lint tools. Uh, I mainly use Condo as part of the editor, but uh, you can run it on the command line as well. Uh, might be interesting to try running that on the uh, CI environment as well. Uh, and again, that that's very easy to do in a continuous integration. You would just include the and the alias in there inside the depths.eden file for the project. Um, Yeah, so that is an important thing. If you uh, every anything that you want from the uh, the practically um, depths to Eden file, if you got if you want to run that in another environment uh, that isn't your computer, like specifically the the continuous integration server, then you will need to make sure that these aliases are also in your uh, depths to Eden file uh, for the project. Um, and the kind of the Eastwood and Idiom checker, which is using uh, Kibit, they were they were created before uh, Closure CLI tools, but there we can just use those as libraries and create an alias for those as well. Uh, so even if it's an older kind of tool, more established tool, you can still use that with uh, Closure CLI as well. And there's some interesting uh, visualization projects out there as well, like finding graphs, making graphs out of your uh, your vars and your dependencies as well. So you can see uh, just how complex your project is. 
Uh, and there's some nice kind of tools. So I've used uh, Criterion before uh, for doing some performance testing. So this is just including uh, the libraries for these. So either the M or X flags work. It's not using uh, the, uh, it's not, we're not actually calling anything uh, in these. And there's a few experimental things I'm adding there as well. So use them at your own risk. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, there we go. There's a question. A uh, year and a half ago, I gave it a quick whirl. I was left with the impression that it didn't have as many things as lining in in terms of what you could do. Is that still the case? Uh, well, I guess hopefully watching this video, you've just seen that that's not the case. I mean, uh, Closure Hill at CLI, I think, pretty much can do anything that lining can do. Uh, it's just, in fact, it can do a few more things than lining up because it can pull from uh, Git repositories, but you can also have local uh, sources as well. So if you're working on two separate projects uh, and developing them, you can actually include the code from one project into another project using uh, a local um, a local keyword. Uh, so you can create an alias that adds in a dependency just using a local root. Uh, let me see if I can. So if we go back to where we were, uh, and do nvim depths.eden file. So uh, as a dependency, so we could add a dependency here uh, that was like a, a local root, but what we'd probably do is add a dependency like a, here of uh, like a, the, and we define uh, a local a local root and we just uh, define the path just add the path to that project and then we could work with both projects uh, uh, without having to create go through the kind of packaging and deployment cycle uh, we can just use uh, those, those those projects locally very very easily uh, and especially if you've got like a mono repo, then it makes it a lot more interested. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I, I don't know if there's, there's nothing, uh, I was using in lining and that I'm missing from closure CLI tools. Um, and there are some kind of several small benefits as well. I find it's, I find the configuration a lot easier. Uh, I never really got on with some of the lining and plugins. I found them a little bit more challenging. And one of the limitations is trying to manage the uh, what people have in their dot line uh, profiles, dot uh, CLJ file. Uh, so people can put like configuration in for plugins or not put that in, and uh, and things don't quite work as you expect or break. Uh, so I think the Depths, uh, the cool closure CLI tools approach using depths of Eden, using Eden as a kind of a data format for configuration is, is much nicer. I think it's the way that we're actually doing uh, a lot of our closure applications uh, in the um, uh, now. Uh, back when Lining came out, then we were doing things slightly differently. So it's not surprising that. Um, the configuration is is a is a closure of, uh, expression, uh, but now we we do things more data centric, and using Eden for our configuration. So I think it's definitely worth having a look at its. Uh, the, the one caveat is if you are on Windows uh, and if you're not on Windows 10, especially, then it's more ch it's a lot more challenging to uh, to use closure CLI tools. Uh, but there is something called uh, Depths, I think it's called, uh, it's from Bork Dude, uh, which is Depths Project. Bork Dude. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, that didn't work. His website's broken. Unless it's called something else. There we go. Uh, there's loads of things on here that. Uh, are doing uh and then there's a is there a depths one on here oh my look at that that's insane <laughs> uh 
uh, repositories. Oop. Deps. Uh, is it deps.crj? Uh, yeah, it could be that one. So you can you can try using deps.crj instead if you're on Windows, um, and uh, that might be an alternative to get you going if you're on a, an older version of Windows. Uh, if you're on Windows 10, then using the Windows subsystem for Linux uh, is uh, is a very straightforward way to go. Uh, not everybody has a chance to upgrade to that, uh, but uh, it is a really nice uh, approach. Uh, and I think Sean Caulfield and several others have uh, found that very useful in day-to-day -day work. Alrighty, uh, well, I'm going to wrap it up there, I think, if there are no more questions. Thank you very much for the comments and the interaction today. It's been uh, it's always good to get uh, a little bit of chat in the chat window. Um, so this is all freely available for you. Uh, feel free to uh, have a look around the... Uh, readme kind of follows the structure of the depths.eden file as well so you should be able to find things fairly easily if not then let me know um, and if you see any bugs or any new features uh, let me know yeah the windows uh, subsystem for linux is uh i mean i used it a couple of years ago and it was good i think it's a lot better it's even better now uh, and it's kind of it's it's a viable alternative to uh, using kind of a Unix environment uh, for for many things, and um, yeah, obviously Microsoft owning Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code, you might be able to do an awful lot of stuff there as well. Uh, but I'm unfortunately I don't have Windows, so uh, I I'm not an expert in those things. Um, okay, well that's it for today. There's a lot more stuff uh, to come. I'm going to do some more things on Coucher, I think, to show that because it is a, it's a really good tool. I don't think I did that any justice whatsoever in that video. Sorry, uh, but I will um, I will do some more details on that. I've used that in the banking on closure application that uh, I've been doing for the. If you go to the uh, closure web apps project uh, book. There's a banking on closure where I'm using uh, Coucher for all the uh, test unit tests, uh, and that works really well. And I keep finding lots of really nice things about Coucher as well. So it's uh, it's uh, it's well worth investing some time in learning that if you uh, uh, if you want to get more out of your testing tools. Okay, uh, so just a reminder: feel free to contact me on any of these uh, channels. Uh, they're all there. So they're practically Discord. That's an invite in there as well. I think you can just sign up to the Zulip one. And um, if you can't get into the closure ones, there is a link to the uh, creating a, your own account there as well. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, feel free to give me any feedback of what you want to see next. Um, there's plenty of things on my to-do list. So if there's something interesting, then I can always uh, raise it up a little bit higher. Where's the button? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, stay safe and have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.